Hello there. Welcome to the filter function in Google Sheets. Now this time at Computer Tutoring, uh, we're starting to do a lot of Google Sheets training. And there's many functions and features to come. But the first of which is the filter function. So what can you use the filter function for? What are some examples of it? Well, we've got some data here. I've uploaded it from Excel. I've renamed it up here, filter muckabout, so you can have a quick look at it. And we're going to use the filter function to extract data. So how does it work? Well, you can create a little dashboards if you wanted to, sort of like you would in pivot tables. It's a little bit more flexible, this one here, because you can actually create your own drop down menus, etc. Not as slick or as not as quick as pivot tables, but it's still good using the filter function in Google Sheets. So how do I do it? Well, first of all, what I want to do is create a new sheet. So if you just go to the bottom here and then click on the button to create a new sheet here. Now you need to make sure you've got some data. If you want to access this data, then please go to the Computer Tutoring website. If you go to online training, you'll find the Google Sheets section. And in the Google Sheets section, you'll be able to have a link to this particular file or the Excel file that you can upload to Google Sheets. I suppose a better add a video and to and instructions as to how you would upload an Excel file to Google Sheets, but that's for another day. I'll put some instructions there as well anyway. So let's just click on our little plus button here. So we've got sheet three. Let's just call this one here the filter function uh, example. That's great. So how does the filter function work? So the first thing about the filter function, let's just get in there and see what happens here. If you type in equals and you write the word filter and open brackets and you can see some of the help features that come up. So the first argument it's asking for is the range. The next argument it's looking for, you see here, is the first condition. And then you can have a subsequent conditions there. So it's the range condition that it checks and whether it's greater than, less than, or equal to, or not equal to uh, another number. And you can use it to look for blanks and non-blanks and remove them, etc. It's very, it's a really effective function. So what we're going to do here is we need the range. And one thing to note is that the range in this example is exactly the same. And that's pretty much a must for the filter function. The range has to be exactly the same. So as of this moment in time, Google Sheets spreadsheets have a thousand rows. So that's what we're going to aim to do. So let's go and I'm going to go back to this data here. Uh, I'm going to go to select my data source. I'm just going to go down. Uh, in fact, if I do the sh control shift and the down arrow a couple of times, it will go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, don't think I have to do this, but I always sort of seem to put dollar signs in it. So it seems to put things into stone. That's great. And I press the... Um, comma ready to go for my first condition so the first condition I'm going to do is look for a name let's for look for a name for an individual but uh, what I'm going to do is if I just go up to the top here there we go just drag up here we go uh, where's my name here let's go these the, the name here so I'm just going to roll this one up here uh, I'm just going to close it down for the time being I'm just interested in the name here I'm going to do control shift down arrow down arrow again it's, and then press the dollar signs in uh, what I just need to do here is because I've got this one from the very top, uh, A1, and this was B2, I'm just going to have to change this one to A2. So it's A2 to J1000, B2 to B1000. So it's got to be the same amount of rows. Great. So next, what we're going to do is going to check for a particular name. So open the brackets here. I can't remember the person's name. So let's have a look here and see. Uh, John Wilson, nice solid name here. So I type in here, John space Wilson. Close the uh, quotation marks and close the brackets. So basically, it's going to look at all of this data, A2 to J1000, and then bring back B2 to B1000, but only when they're John Wilson. That's what you're going to see. This is the filter. So when I press enter, I can see the filters and I can see that all of these are just John Wilson. Now the interesting thing is, is the formula only exists in the top left hand cell. Uh, if you look at the other cells, it just actually shows the data. Quite handy when you want to use the filter function in conjunction with other functions as well. So as you can see, it doesn't have the headings and I don't want it to, uh, you know, I didn't include the headings. That's why I started from the second row. So what I'm going to do here is just going to right click on row one and go to insert one above and press equals and swap back to my data sheet and see if I can just grab hold of that name there, that's great. So it brings the company name across and I'm going to autofill it across to see all the others. So far so good. Brilliant with the filter function here. 
Now, what happens though, you see the problem is, is John Wilson's fine, but I've got to go back to the data if I want to see Andy Hanworth, then go to filter function example, go to the top here and then change this to, you know, Andy Hanworth. And I'll make sure I spell it right. Of course, if I don't spell it right at all, you know, if I missed out the N, then I get a not applicable error. I just want to try to reduce these errors. So this is what we're going to use the filter function in conjunction with the drop down list function um, and a little bit of the query functions as well. So we can see the difference in that. So instead of us actually tarred coding this, let's put the end back, shall I? There we go. So that we can see the contact name. It would be better to have the contact name over here, say uh, in L. So I can type in contact name. Under here I would type Andy Hanworth. I can type properly. There we go. I would go back to the filter function. So instead of it actually being Andy Hanworth here, let me highlight that. Let me delete it. And let me click on Andy Hanworth over here. Press enter. So now I can type the name in. But still I have to remember the name. And it's more, it's more than handy to use if I just remember. I can think I remember John Wilson. So, but I've got to get it precise, you know, and it will filter it out. I've got to get it precise. So how do I do that? Well, you create a drop down list, and that you do by data validation. So let's have a look at that one. So if I go to here, um, I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to data validation. I'm going to do list from a range, which is fine. Make sure that's selected. Uh, I'm going to click on this. Let me click on this little um, grid here so I can go to select the data. And the data I'll select is literally all the names. I'm going to click on B2. Hold down Control and Shift, press the down arrow twice, so it's B2 to B1000, so I've got 1000 records going. Click on Save, that's fantastic. So if I go back here, I'll have a nice little drop down list. So I can see Henry Baker, I can see all these different ones here, which is fantastic, excellent. That's good. Great, so far so good. Now if I wanted to do more than one condition, you know, if I wanted to see Henry Baker or Francis Granger who have sport more than 50 products uh, here, let's have a look here, or let's just say 80 products seems a nice number here for this data. So let's say 80 products, I would again go back into here, I'll tell you what I'll do, so let's say um, um, min number ordered, for want of a better word there. Okay, I'm going to type in the 80 in there, so I'm not hard coding, I'm going to refer back to this cell here. Go back into the data, and I add my next condition in. So I type in a comma, I would then go back to my data here, I would then make sure I select the quantity, so where's my quantity here, there we go here. I have to do the control shift and the down arrow a couple of times, sometimes it just doesn't pick that one up. I've answers on a postcard for that one, what I'm just going to do is I'll just select a few, and instead of H9, I'm going to do H1000. If I get it wrong, though, I'll get an error. Put my dollar signs in, and then what I want it to be is greater than, and I go back to my filter function and click on the 80 here. So press enter, and now it's Henry Baker with a greater than 80. I type in 50, it's greater than 50. If it's 90, I type in 90, and I can start seeing the filter function working really well. Great, excellent. Now comes the tricky part. Say, for instance, you see here, I have to choose a name for this filter function to work. What happens if I press delete on the keyboard? Well, you can see I get a big, fat, not applicable error. Now, what I'd like to see is if that filter wasn't working, that drop down list is the whole list of data. So, what do I do? Well, this is how you do it. Basically, the filter function will not allow you to search what they call wildcards. You can't use the asterisk, you can't use the percentage sign to try to search all of the different um, orders, as we can see in this list here. The query function will allow you to do it. Uh, so, how do we do that? So what the query function, what we're going to do is we need to check to see if this is blank or not. So we're going to click on the beginning here, and we're going to type in an if function. Uh, if, and we're going to say not is blank. And then let me click on the cell L2 there. Okay, so basically if it's not blank, there's something in it, do the filter function. 
Otherwise, we need to do the query function. So the query function works very similar to the, um, the filter function, but it allows you to use the wildcards like select all. So if we then go back to our data here, uh, let's just select our data from here, and I'm just going to just, in fact, with this, I can just go A across. It's a bit more flexible here. Great, I type in a comma, and then I'll say select all. In fact, that should just let me do it. Brilliant. Uh, oh, one little mistake because I've already got the column headings here. I'm just going to make a minor adjustment to this. So if I just do that, hopefully it allow me to backspace, go back to my data. Let's start from two and go down. Hopefully I can do control shift and down arrow. It's still not allowing me to do that. That's a bit of a pain. Or something I'm missing there, obviously. So let me put the... Um, a22 J a thousand, and just in case I add other rows in or anything else, I'm gonna put the dollar signs in here. I'm just gonna press enter. There we have it. Excellent. So now what's happening here is if I just zoom in to show you. Okay, so this is an if condition, and it's checking to see if there's something in L2. It's checking to see if it's not blank. If it's not blank, something's in it, great. Then what you can do is it's gonna then run the filter function. So this filter function just here uh, that goes on let's just uh, actually yeah there we go there yeah, so this function uh, there we go so this function just this filter function just from here there we go to across to here get my pink arrow sorted out there that's fantastic Great, if not, it runs a query function which just selects everything. And now if I want to just see Henry Baker, I click on the drop down list, choose Henry Baker. I'm looking at Henry Baker's. I want to see his orders over 50. I click on 50, I can see Henry Baker's orders over 50 and Francis Granger as well. So there we go. There's a little introduction to the filter function and some examples of where you might and how you might use the filter function. And just a little bit, I've got a toes a little bit wet with the uh, query function there as well. And we can see a little bit of a difference between the two. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, then please click on the subscribe button. Uh, make sure you don't miss any of the Google Sheets videos that will be coming up. If you do need any videos or request any of them, um, we are, uh, currently making more videos as well so if you do need any videos and request them just ask you know you never know uh, make sure you comment below if you've got anything to say or to add or you know if you think there's anything that I've done that you think oh you could do this a little better you know you always learn so that'd be really much appreciated so thank you so much for watching <laughs>